creature feature B movies. Overnight, Japan came to a standstill, or rather a sit still. The only time anyone in Tokyo stood up was to hit the dance floor when the cash in single Disco Invader was playing on the jukebox. Space Invaders was a great balanced game between risk and reward. I mean, in order to shoot the, uh, uh, the aliens, you had to move out behind, from behind the bunkers because they were dropping stuff on you. And so you, it was this constant hit or be hit. I initially got the idea from an American game called Breakout. But why as in Breakout, it was just the player destroying blocks. I wanted to develop a game where the blocks fought back. Invader's success was due to several new ideas which would set the benchmark for all future video games, such as the adoption of the concept of a high score, the idea of progress in destroying successive waves. But perhaps most importantly, Invaders was the first video game to feature fully animated characters. The Invaders seemed real. People could believe they were really saving the Earth. Space Invaders was a worldwide hit. Invaders almost became a victim of its own success, politicians declaring it a menace to Japanese society. Children started staying out all night playing Space Invaders. There was even a case where a girl left home because her parents wanted to stop her playing Invaders. Six months after its release, the police ordered arcade owners to restrict their opening hours and declare the curfew after midnight. Having last played Space Invaders 20 years ago in Slough, I didn't fancy my chances against the man who designed it, especially in a tough away game in Tokyo. Is this your original book that you used when you were designing Space Invaders? The Aha. character, image. Are these, are these the, the original drawings yes. of the aliens? Where did you get the idea for these from? For this name. Some of these look more like, I mean, that looks like a crab, looks like a jellyfish, more like animals you see on this planet as opposed to, to aliens. Was, was that the original case? It would be a great honor if I could have a two player game with you at Space Invaders, would you mind? 200. Uh, 200. Two players. No, I don't. <laughs> It's that music. <laughs> Rubbish. Yeah, take your jacket off, of course. You mentioned earlier the Nagoya method. What's that? The two of us are going to do it. Yeah, so beat you by 10 points. I actually beat the man who wrote Space Invaders by 10 points. Easy. Easy, wicked skills. Oh, you've got to be quick, though. Thank you very much for letting me play this with you. It's been a great honor. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very, very much indeed. Yeah, thank you very much. When Space Invaders took on Uncle Sam, video game popularity soared. It also fired Atari's interest in creating second generation games, one result of which was the release of a game that was, within a year, to replace Invaders as the most popular cabinet in the arcade Asteroids. We 
don't know for sure, but we have estimated that Asteroids easily takes in around $10 million a week in quarters. Asteroids was incredibly tricky to play. It had more buttons than any previous game. Five. Only the hard kids could cope with rotate left, rotate right, thrust, fire and hyperspace. It was their names, not mine, that dominated the Hall of Fame at the Montem Sports Centre. Asteroids came out because Lyle Raines called me into his office and he said he had an idea for a game where uh, there was a, a previous game, I believe it was called Cosmos, where uh, there was a big indestructible planet and people were always shooting that. And he said, well, why don't you let him shoot, uh, you know, something and, and blow it up. And I believe at the time I told him, well, I'd like to blow it into smaller and smaller pieces. Asteroids was a very important game. Um, aesthetically for a start because it used wireframe vector graphics and so it looked very spartan and very sharp and pure. You have to put it on field test. When you put it on field test you take it out to a location and see how much money it makes. Uh, I remember on first field test it, w watching some guy come up, put his quarter in and die in like 15 seconds, 20 seconds. You know, it's just, and then he pulled another quarter out. And to me that was a very good sign because usually anybody who dies you know, in 15-20 seconds it's like, oh man, this game's too hard, I'm, I'm out of here. But this massive game had one massive cheat. It soon became apparent to anyone with an IQ in double figures that if you position your ship at the side of the screen and destroyed all but one of the large, slow-moving asteroids, you could easily pick off the tiny flying saucers for a thousand points each. This technique became so popular it even acquired its own name, lurking. And with an extra life available at every 10,000 points, marathon games ensued. At this machine in Fresno, 18-year-old Greg Davies scored 15 million points, played 31 hours on one quarter. You stood here for 31 hours? No, I sat down. <laughs> I remember at the time I tried lurking. I remember trying it at one point in development and decided, you know, it was too difficult. I'd spent a lot of time at the Montem Sports Centre lurking, not on asteroids, but round the girls' changing rooms. Maybe Ed could teach me to do it properly. A quarter in, is it? Nope, not necessary. Oh, have we got three games? Oh, yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Every game is dream. Should we have a two-player game? Sure. Lovely. I'll be player one. I'm not very good. Here we go. This is how you play Asteroids. I've got to admit, when I was a kid, I found this game much too hard to play. It was last up 20 seconds. Like I did there. That's embarrassing. Fair play, you are the bloke that wrote it, though, so you should be beating me. <laughs> that doesn't, <make laughs> that sense, doesn't so. guarantee anything. <laughs> Do you think that the fact you can actually put in your initials made it more addictive? Because you felt like you were interacting with it more. Yes. Oops. Got the last rock. Were there any names that you couldn't type in? Like, for example, if, if your name was Frederick Uriah Kennedy, could you put in those initials or...? Actually, um, we started putting sensors in shortly thereafter. Right. Does your wife mind you having this? This is actually her game. Oh, really? She bought this long before she met me. Is that, is that why she fell in love with you? Because you wrote Astro? No. <laughs> I like to think it was because I was a good guy. Right. Alongside Asteroids, 1980 saw the introduction of further groundbreaking arcade games. Williams released Defender, written by Eugene Jarvis, which devoured $1.5 billion in quarters during its lifetime. Atari launched Missile Command by Dave Thera. And Battlezone by Ed Rotberg. It really was the high watermark for arcade games in the US. Never again would these American machines be produced in such high numbers.